Hello everybody, Lawrence Fleming here. I'm going to continue reading in Romans today. This place is just the noisiest camp you can imagine. Not as bad as the one in Georgia, but this would be a good number two. There's lots of critters around here, you can hear them. I saw a family of beavers a little earlier today when we were out on a hike. So we got some critters that are making it worthwhile, but the two-legged critters are noisy. There's some kind of a big gathering, I think, this weekend is one of the problems I'm having. When I booked this campsite, I booked it because I needed to be up here for this weekend. I booked the last site they had available. There's some big gathering of yard sales. Almost every trailer has got a table set up selling something. This is kind of how they help pay their way, I guess. And they all should be, be tired, so I don't understand, I guess, why they're out here. It gives them something to do to make crafts. There's some you know, kids' clothes hanging in one tent area. Just general yard sales full of knickknacks, all kinds of stuff. I don't need anything. I can't fit anything more in my car. So, and I'm not a shopper anyway. All right. We read out of Romans 1 and 2. We're going to switch to Romans 3, starting in verse 1. What advantage then? Has the Jew, or what is the profit of circumcision, circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because of them, chiefly because of them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make them faithfulness, faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not indeed. Let God be the, be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged. I think that's um, three, four, yeah, that's coming from Psalms 51, I think. So Paul again is writing, trying to explain the whole situation. He hasn't been to the Romans, he hasn't preached to them yet. So by doing these, this letter, he's trying to give them all the information you would tell him if he was there in person. Continuing on in five, but if our unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unjust who inflicts wrath? I speak as a man. Certainly not. For then how will God judge the world? For if the truth of God has increased throughout my life, my lie to his glory, why am I still judged as a sinner? And why not say, let us do evil that good may come? as we are slanderously reported, and as some affirm that they say their condemnation is just. In 9, what then? Are we better than they? No, not all. For we have pre previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, and this is coming from Verse 9, which one is this? It's got a bunch of subheadings and it's hard to tell. All right, never mind, I'll have to look them up later. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands, there is none who seeks after God. 
They have all turned aside. It's wonderful being in nature, but sometimes nature is difficult. Pollen, still high. Making my nose run. Okay, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands, there is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside, they have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Most of these things are coming from Psalms, but they're all over the place, so it's just quoting the Old Testament. <clears throat> in the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Going on to verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh has been justified in his sight. And by the law is the knowledge of sin. There is so little to do at this park. Everybody who comes to this park has to drive down this little dirt road, which is a dead end, and then drive back. And all they've done is seen what I showed you in the videos in the last, at the end of my last one, and there'll be some on this one. I am extremely disappointed in Kentucky by not having more sites. They have a monument that was put up, I think, in 1907 for the team that came in here to discover this area and build a fort. And they held on to that fort through some various attacks. And Daniel Boone, Colonel Daniel Boone, was the leader of the group that came down here. There's nothing. Except for this concrete monument that isn't even as old. It's not, it's not anywhere, as, it's not even as old as the Civil War. Come on, Kentucky. There should be a statue of Fess Parker somewhere around here. And they know what Daniel Boone looks like because they've got a good picture of him up on one of the little plaques. they got some plaques up that talk about it. But that's it. I can find that in any history book. Okay. Okay. By now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. A memory verse for you, that's uh, 323. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance God has passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he may be justified through the justifier of one who has faith in Jesus. I'm going to pause this and blow my nose because this is getting to be <laughs> be right. Okay, continuing on in verse 27. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? The truck just stopped right next to me and just sat there with the motor and he even revved it up a few times. 
You can see I'm reading the Bible. You see how people try to distract? Satan's good, but he's not better than God or Jesus. Okay. Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then make void the law through the through a faith? Certainly not. We don't do away with the law. Jesus said he came to fulfill it. On the contrary, we establish the law. Okay, I'm done with three and I'm going to read a little bit of a commentary. Those who are outside the faith have a difficult time understanding how God can judge good people and let them go spend eternity in hell separated from him. See, God never sends anybody to hell. It's the default path unless people actually try to get off that path. And here comes another truck. Nope, that's a, that's a different... Is that the same truck? These are people that pulled in into a trailer and they're in a site that's barely designed for a tent. They just took whatever they can get. I'm surprised the people let them book it. Okay. See, I'm getting distracted by things that are just plain noisy and destructive of the environment. It's hard to stay connected to God, which is what I've got to do when I'm teaching, with all the distractions. I prayed for quiet, but I normally would do my video early in the morning before people are up. This is my workday video, which I'm going to be working tomorrow, so I can't do the video. So I'm off schedule. Uh, okay, Jesus, let's get this finished. You ready? Those who are outside the faith have difficult time understanding how God can judge good people and let them go to spend eternity in hell, separated from Him. The doctor, doctrine of sinfulness of humanity does not mean that people cannot do good things. People are created in the image of God. So good things are in them. But can you justify yourself to God? Not without Jesus. And even after the fall, people still retain that image. Through salvation, God begins to restore that image as it should be. However, the question remains as to how God can condemn people who are basically good. When people can do good actions, their basic moral character is not good. Paul carefully explains in Romans 3 that all people have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You cannot associate with God with sin. God has no sin in him. He can't condone sin. So as a sinful person, we can never reach God. That's why Jesus had to come and die, to become a sacrifice. God set up a plan for the Jews initially to do a blood sacrifice, to cover your sins. Jesus came to fulfill that law, but fulfill it himself to be the final sacrifice. Blood sacrifices are not necessary anymore. He did it once and for all. You don't need to do it on Sunday again in Catholic Church. You don't need to do it again. He did it once. He doesn't need to do it again. So he shed his blood for us that we can then reach God because we are sin free in the eyes of God. We're shielded because of Jesus. We're not sin free as a human down on this planet. We don't have our new bodies yet. We don't have our renewed self that we will get, get eventually when we go to see Jesus in the clouds or if we die and go to heaven. 
we don't have it yet. Paul put together a collection of Old Testament verses to demonstrate to all the people that are guilty before God. And he's got it in uh, Psalms, Ecclesiastics. If you've got a, a Bible that has a cross-reference or footnotes, you will have all the verses here. Psalms again, Psalms 5, 9, 10, 7, Proverbs 15 through 7, Psalms 36. So these are all references that Paul brings in. Why would he do this? Because he's writing to a Jewish community in Rome. Yes, Rome is full of the Gentiles, and he's going to get to that. But he has to make sure the Jewish community knows first. Jesus came to the Jews first. Paul was writing to them, and then he's going to share this with the rest. But Jews and Gentiles can basically glean from this. In most cases, Paul, when he arrives in town, whatever town it is, when he was traveling, he would go to the synagogue first, present the message. And if they would receive him, he would stay there and present the gospel. It seems like every time he did that, they eventually asked him to leave. But at least he presented it to them. And then he goes out to the rest of the country, the rest of the, the countryside, establishing churches. He hasn't done that in Rome yet. Paul had a really good understanding of the Old Testament, being a Pharisee. He knows where they made their mistakes at. He knows where they've taken in the commentary and replaced the Bible with the commentary. And the commentary made a couple of mistakes. They didn't focus on the prophecy side of stuff. They wanted control of the people. The religious leaders of the time, just like our government officials today, they want control of the people. They didn't tell them there was a savior coming to save them. They wouldn't want them to know that. They'd want them to know God is a mean, tough God, and he's gonna pounce you like that if you sin. You come and give me tithes. And, pay for your repentance. We see these people today. The world's full of them. We have these get-rich preachers. And they prove that it is possible to get rich. You have a gullible congregation who throws money to you and you live in a multi-million dollar mansion. No. My son, when he works with the church down in Peru, they're in a three-story building, the church. Sanctuary is on the ground floor, classrooms on the second floor, and the preacher and his family live on the third floor. Modest. That's the way preachers should be. Now, a preacher could have and unfortunately today, because of the high prices, a preacher, a preacher could still be living in a uh, half a million dollar home. Forty years ago, it would have been a thirteen thousand dollar home. The world's coming to an end. Just endure as much as you can and stay close to God. I'm tempted to keep to stay in here until we finish Romans, but we'll see what God has in store. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. You, me, everybody. Without Jesus, we cannot approach God. We may glean something. Like the person talking to Jesus, don't you know, you let the dogs eat the crumbs that fall on the table off the table? Yeah. She wasn't a Jew. 
he agreed. And that's all you're going to get, crumbs, without Jesus. Accept the world the way it is, accept the people the way they're running the world, and you will never meet God. That is sad. All right, until we meet in the clouds, God bless. Thomas, say hi. Hello. They're cooking not as fast as I like, but I'm getting rained on, and that's the problem. The swap sides where the fire's hottest. Just about ready.